<laughs> yes, Stunra to see Pundina Pongjoss was in fact I, the left arm of the Soul King all along. <laughs> but you didn't see that coming, did you? Now, Mayuri Kurotsuchi, allow me to invade your body, twist your nerves, and rip off your skull so that I may drop it at the feet of our amazing His Majesty Yuha Bok so that I can finally be- Oh. Sup? Not much, man. Um, didn't expect to see you here. Uh, when was the last time we saw each other? A couple years back? It's been 3,622 years since the last time we spoke. Do you know how much mom has been worried? I don't have to bring that out. Now I'm tired of this bullshit. Ever since you were a little kid, all this crap about, I'm gonna go off into the world, I'm gonna see. You know, you kept writing us letters that you were the new mascot of Jainism or some shit. And we believed you! Okay, we were proud of you! And then all of a sudden you show up here. You're in the league with the Quincy's. You know what? I'm tired of this shit! Mom's tired of this shit, and Dad, you know what? You're coming home with me. No, no, I can't. I'm really doing this thing. You're coming home with me right now. I will twist your fucking. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. Fight, 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 fight. That was the weirdest intro skit I've ever done in my life. Just, just thought I should let you know. Yeah. Hey everybody, Techie 101 here. Hit a review, Bleach, chapter number 637, titled, Baby, Hold Your Hand. Hold your hand. I think it should be Hold My Hand, but, you know, whichever, it doesn't matter. Anyway, chapter starts off with Kenpachi Zaraki still, uh, pretty much, uh, doped out of his mind, thanks to Ashisogi Jizo, so he can't move, apparently, any part of his body. Meanwhile, Mayuri's just kind of looking down on him, grinning, just like, Ah, well, I was left with no other options, so, you know, it's just kind of my thing. You should really expect this kind of shit at this point. Honestly, I have you all drugged 24-7, and I could kill you with some kind of parasitic bacteria when you're sleeping, but this paralysis effect will work as well. However, Kenpachi's not 100% paralyzed, just about 99 point... 9%. The other 0.1% is his eyes that he can still move, so he moves them over to look at uh, Mayori, and Mayori is actually surprised by this fact that he's still able to uh, move his eyes, stating that uh, Ashisoki Jizo needs some improvements, so he's thanking him for at least giving him that information that he still has to up the dosage, I suppose. Meanwhile, we cut back over to Ikaku and Yumachika that were able to avoid the effects of the paralysis last chapter. Remember, uh, Nemu was just like, you know, cover your ears, you're gonna go deaf. And, well, you know, she didn't have any urgency in it. She's basically just like, cover your ears or you'll go deaf, pretty much much like that. Uh, so no, they're still okay, but they're kind of fuming at the sense that Mayori is treating their captain like that. To the point where Yumachika even brings up the possibility that Mayori was goading him the entire time. You know, that whole back and forth they were having about, oh, are you really talking to me? Or are you just blabbering to yourself? He was doing that on purpose because it knew it was pissing Kenpachi off and that would make Kenpachi go run up and fight Pernida, which would give Mayori, you know, a perfect opportunity to analyze its abilities, which given Mayori, I can't really see that that is beyond what he would do. And Yumachika says to Nemu, oh, well, looks like things never change, huh, with your good old captain. And Nemu just kind of responds with, oh, I wish that's how it would be. And Yumachika's like, what? That doesn't, what, what, is it, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Nemu just kind of looks more intently at Mayori and is just like, oh, nothing really, just what I meant. Okay, so this has kind of been bugging me. I mean, last chapter bugged me a little bit, but I didn't want to bring it up because I didn't really know where it was going to go. But with this chapter also, in the, in the past two weeks, we've had this one particular scene where we've had Nemu just kind of staring in the background, just analyzing the fight, and she's not... It looks like she's worried about Mayuri, but it looks more than that. It just seems like she has this feeling that something bad's gonna happen to him, and because she's just emotionless, she's not the kind of person to be like, I hope he's okay. No, she's worried, and she thinks maybe something might happen, but she's just, like, all stoic and shit, so she's just like, oh, well, okay, maybe he'll be okay, maybe he won't be. That's how she can express her emotions, and it's starting to really bug me, because from the way this is getting set up and the way that this is 
you know, perfectly going in Mayuri's favor. Like, Mayuri was able to counterattack per night last chapter, no problems, and he's been dominating this fight so far, and there doesn't look to be, like, any issues going on, and that's when you need to start worrying. When shit is going 100% your way, then you need to start worrying about it going down here really fucking fast. So, you know, those are just my thoughts on the matter, that Mayuri might possibly die in this fight. I really don't want to think that, because he's my favorite captain, but, of course, whenever Kubo's gonna have someone die, uh, they have to spot- he's gonna spotlight that individual, and Mayuri's been certainly spotlighted here, and you have the whole thing with Nemu, and just everything's going his way, and it just well, from what we see in this chapter, it's like, oh, I really- uh, I just hope it doesn't go that way, but okay. Anyway, though, we, we cut back over to the uh, fight where Mayuri is confronting um, Pernida, and he's just going off on a rant about, you know, oh, well, there was the noble sacrifice of Kenpachi Zaraki, a member of the Gote 13, that was enabling me to get to this point in the fight, and Pernida is still... Kubo does that stupid shit again, where it's like, oh, shit, last chapter, last panel, it's ripping, it's finally gonna be revealed, and now we're cutting back over, and it's like, oh, it's still ripping, you still haven't seen exactly what it is yet, so for the first quarter, third of the chapter, you know, we still can, you know, do the, you know, the monologue shit, not worry about what it looks like yet so okay Kubo whatever but yeah Mayuri asks him I should really feel honored and, and should cherish the sacrifice that Kenpachi Soraki laid down so that Mayuri will have the opportunity to cut its fucking guts open and perform a vivisection in his laboratory and he does all of this while doing that face Okay then, um, well I've just come to a stunning realization. That face is gonna be the last face I see before I die. Could be in a year, maybe I get hit by a bus, you know, I get hit, lying on the asphalt, bleeding out, and everyone's rushing over me, oh my god, call 911! And I'm looking up in the sky, and I'm like, oh god, this is it! And then I see that face hovering over me! Or it could be in 60, 70 years, I'm in the hospital on my deathbed, surrounded by friends and family, it's, it's okay, I'm ready to go and then I'm about to blank out and the doctor comes in and the doctor is, has the face of that and I'm like oh no those years ago and that's gonna be the last thing I see before I depart this world I've already come to terms with it you should too because this is your fate as well for anyone that has seen this image Kubo included <laughs> Of course, Pernida doesn't respond to Mayori here. Instead, the cloak just rips completely, revealing... You guys ready? You ready for this? Pernida Punk Joss, Stern Ritter C. You know what it was all along? Of course you don't. Um, what Pernida Punk Joss was all along was... The left hand of the Soul King. Dun, 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 dun! I already saw it coming. Ah, no, no, I'm not trying to bullshit you. I, myself didn't see this coming, um, you know, I was going on Nerve Monster, which, which, by the way, it's a possibility it still could have been that, because Pernida, I mean, there's, like, a mountain of questions I have with this, like, literally, you could fill Mount Everest with the amount of questions I have for this, but clearly, uh, one of the abilities it has to have is the ability to expand, we're gonna see that more elaborated, uh, in a couple of, uh, pages here, but when it starts off in a cloak form, and then it can expand into this giant hand, it might have possibly resembled something like what I was describing last chapter, and just evolved into this, but, um, yeah, so it's the left arm of the Soul King, and, uh, the thing here that you gotta know about this is that because Kubo teased us with this for so long, you know, like uh, in chapter 625, we thought we were gonna see it at the very end of that chapter, and instead he made us wait an extra week, so it was two weeks, two weeks, where every Bleach fan on the internet was speculating what the fuck this thing was, and I got pretty much every theory mailed to me at some point. You know, uh, if it's a character that we haven't seen in a while, it's like, oh, it's gonna be Ichiru, oh, it's gonna be Holly Bell, or, you know, things that don't even make any sense, like, oh, it's gonna be Aizen, or it's gonna be one of the dead Spada, or, you know, it's gonna be the left hand of the Soul King. Somebody actually sent me that, so congratulations, Luke. You win the prize. What are we giving him, Tim? Okay, Tekking. Well, he's won an all-expenses-paid trip to Worcester, England! Woo! Worcester, England! You have fun, buddy. You have fun. All-expenses-paid trip. Have fun, buddy. Also, you get a free cookie. You win the internet for the week. Congratulations. Ah, okay, I... I don't even know how to tackle this one, like, do I stop the review here and just go on my list of questions? Because if that's the case, this is gonna be like a 45 minute gap until we get back to the review. Or do I wait till the very end? I don't, okay, I'm just gonna keep going. 
I'm going to keep going just to get through this because honestly, aside from this big reveal, uh, there really isn't much else in the chapter. So let me just get through the rest of this uh, quickly as possible and then we'll we'll cover it. All right. So uh, Ikaku and Yumachika start freaking out. They start losing their shit. I'm witnessing what this is. And Mayuri is pretty calm. He just strikes a more serious expression. He's just like, ah, that's the left arm of the Soul King. So he figures that out immediately, mostly because that Uketake just displayed this ability not too long ago. Uh, so therefore he would be able to know what it is. My question question is, though, what if uh, Uketake had not absorbed the right arm of the Soul King? Like, they would have no idea what the fuck this thing is in that situation, because it would have been a completely unknown entity. They'd be like, oh, okay, you're a giant hand. That's Your nightly ritual must be fantastic. I don't really know. It, it begins to expand even more, ripping off its cloak, and uh, it, it looks like nerve and muscle just starts manifesting itself and growing, increasing its size to a giant hand with, a, you know, the arm extending out of it, ripping off most of its cloak, just looming over them, which I, I thinking this is a panel Kubo wanted to be intimidating, but there's only about as much of intimidation as a, a giant hand can really give you. I mean, if it was like an anaconda or something, okay, but this is just, this isn't really that foreboding, sorry. Ah, it seems with your ability you have quite the handy- No, 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 I swear to god, one more pun and I will use my middle finger to fucking skewer you! Okay, okay, fine. Just hold on, I have to make one toward Kenpachi then. Hey, Kampachi, did you enjoy your hand job last chapter? <laughs> Meanwhile, Mayuri just states the reasoning why he figured this isn't such a big deal, because if there's a right arm of the Soul King, there's reason to believe there was a left arm hand, uh, hanging out somewhere, although he has no idea where, because this is kind of like dealing with, I know this is going to sound weird, dealing with the fact that this is an afterlife already, but this is dealing with gods of other gods that might have not existed to other gods' perspectives. This is like in the Soul Society, people have deities and some of them are are real and other them and others are not and this one just happens to be real so try to wrap your arm around that ha huh? but uh, Mayuri states that, you know, from the data he received from Uketake, from the uh, the fact that it has a single eye on it, it's most notably the uh, left arm. Although, I believe the right hand had it on the back of the hand, and then the right arm had it on the front of the hand. So, I don't know if there's a difference there. And he also brings up the fact that there's, in fact, two uh, pupils in this one, aside from the uh, the original. So, this might give maybe a little bit of a, an idea to how Yuha controlled it, because it looks more like the almighty power, and I'll get back to it um, in a second. But also, also, I have to bring up the fact that um, this is also like people are questioning like is Kubo going with some, some Exodia thing like are we going to see the left and right legs of the Soul King next I don't know I don't know about that because you know is it is it is it possible of course it is but you know when we see the right arm of the Soul King it's like okay there's a right arm so it's fair to assume there's going to be a left it's like when Yamamoto used his east bonkai it's like okay there's probably going to be a west one um but you know the legs I don't know because also we've seen the Soul King in, in full profile before and we've seen him not never have any arms but i think he did have something resembling legs so i don't know if they're gonna go that route with it or not but you know whatever that's the that's the fucking least of our questions right now really Pernida activates its nerve ability again coming out of its fingernails ow that ow that just looks painful uh erupting toward mayori to which mayori counters with his trusty uh uh d d d he, he, okay he pulls out like a, a string that looks like a balloon and an umbrella with a ball on it that has a face, and then the face expands. What the fuck? Seriously, why does he just have that with him? Like, I mean, maybe he had it with him, maybe it's like an all-purpose shield, but why do you have to put a face on it? That's that's terrifying, Mayuri. All oh, right, it's Mayuri. He probably probably gets off to that every night. But yeah, anyway, the nerve endings come in contact with this shield thing, and and I actually don't know because this thing has a face. Um, the next panel we see something screaming in agony. I don't know if it's Pernita screaming in agony because it came in contact with it, or it's the face on the umbrella balloony thing screaming itself because it looks like it could if it wanted to. Um, I don't really know. I'm just gonna say it's Pernita because that same shit happened last chapter. So, yeah. But uh, Mayuri asks it, oh, well, the left arm of the Soul King, why it would, you know, be deemed inferior by Yuha, while well, it would work for Yuha? That's an interesting question. Although I guess that's the least of our issues. No, no, Mayuri, that is not the least of our issues. That is the whole issue here. How the fuck did Yuha take it? Okay, wait, wait till the end, wait till the end. All right, so final scenes of the chapter. We have Mayuri, you know, back talking to Pernida, left hand, whatever, who begins talking itself, stating, you know, basically just repeating what Mayuri stated. You know, he's in a euphoric state. So, you know, Mayuri gets even more excited. Holy shit, this thing can actually talk now. So, I mean, like, what organs does it use to generate sound? That's so interesting. Ikaku and Yumachika are still losing their shit. They're still trying to run 
run away, stating, hey, Mayori, come on, you know, why are you still hanging out there? Mayori's just like, ah, well, this exceeded my expectations. This is a happiness that I do not know what is. Okay, going back to the whole possibility he might die here because he's getting all, like, freaking euphoric and excited. I don't, okay. But, um, anyway, the hand doesn't really know how to respond to this other than just how to, uh, expel, I guess, all of its nerve endings in one massive wave directly at Mayori, who states that, Oh, yes, come, come, give it to me, give it to me, hand! D don't hold back, left arm of the Soul King. Final uh, panel of the chapter is the uh, hand repeating what he says to a degree while also adding in his own words, basically just like, left arm not right. My name is Pernida, like like robotic, like it's having struggling trying to speak. Yeah, so that's how it ends. And it looks like the pupils begin to get a little bit more dilated, like you get to see them more noticeable, and that's how it ends right there. So we don't really know what happens in terms of like that wave of nerves that gets sent to our Mayuri, what's it going to do or whatever, it's going to be a new technique. But that's the least of our concerns. So, gee, I don't even know. I need, I need some fresh air. This is freaking, this is blowing my mind. Ugh. Okay, first thing I think I should start with. There's a left arm of the Soul King. Where was it at before this? The right arm was apparently just some deity in the middle of Rukongai. Was the left arm the same way? Did it have its own special region of Rukongai I was watching over? What's the deal with that? Second thing, how did Yuha come across the left arm? Did the left arm come across it? I only ask this because Uketake, apparently, or Uketake's parents had to like pray to the right arm to have it inserted into Uketake. So did someone do that with Yuha? Maybe that was something how he got brought back to life. Maybe to some degree, I don't know. Uh, but apparently it can't be because it's something different with Ukitake. You know, Ukitake has the uh, right arm, like, bound to him, like, inside of him, and that he had to release using, like, that chant. And Pernida is its own little separate being that was able to exist without being connected to Yuha. So, what's the deal with that? Uh, next thing, big thing, how... You know, did, did, did the left arm betray, you know, the, um, the the Soul Society or the Soul King, or did Yuha brainwash it? That's kind of confusing because arms don't have brains, so, yeah. Um, you know, and I wouldn't even, like, I don't even know what you would classify the arms of the Soul King or even the Soul King in general as. Like, it's not, you can't just say the Soul King is a Shinigami and just leave it at that, okay? Because that's just, no. <laughs> it's a little bit more, you know, something beyond that, something more transcendent than that. Um, so, okay, maybe, you know, Yuha came across it somewhere in the Soul Society, because apparently it's been a part of his, his elite guard for a while, you know, like all the other elite Sternritters knew of its existence, it's not like Yuha just picked it up like last, you know, like a couple hours ago, you know, it's something that's been in his employ for at least a while, and, uh, there's that, um, what else? Um, okay, so let's just say... You know, it was able to brainwash it. Did it bestow the power of the compulsion? Like, that nerve ability it can do. Like, shooting out the nerve endings. Like, is this is this its own power, or is this the power that Yuha bestowed to it? And once again, you know, Yuha is able to bestow the powers to something that's not a Quincy. It's just... <sighs> and you can just keep going on and on like that. You know, just all these questions. I mean, I've been doing... This will be my 182nd Bleach Review. I'm pretty sure. And this is probably the, t the one time I have... So many goddamn questions. Just so many. I could keep on going. This might merit a discussion video. This might be one of the very, very, very few times. I think only like the third time I've done a discussion video after the chapter. Because I just can't get all my thoughts together right now. It's just crazy. Um, but, I mean, hey, it was a reveal that we certainly were not expecting for most of us. Except for you, Luke. Congratulations, buddy. Um, and I'm sure there was somebody else out there that hypothesized it was the left arm of the Soul King. Um... It was a big surprise. I'm glad it wasn't just a normal character. Like, oh, there's this guy we haven't seen in a while. But no, it was something pretty shocking, admittedly. Um, and it's probably going to be able to do something else beyond of just the abilities it's seen show f so far. And it has a volt standing! It has a freaking volt standing! How do you... That's another question! Also, something else is that I actually went back to Chapter 599 when Pernida first showed up. And, uh, oh, by the way, that name, Pernida, that's another thing, Pernida Parkjoss, did they, did you just pick that name out of a hat, or does it have any significance, whatever, whatever, so back, back in chapter 599, um, there's a scene where you see Pernida, you know, uh, you know, about to scrunch up Shutara's clone's, like, corpse, and you see a hand coming out of its cloak, and it, like, breathes, it breathes, it freaking breathes, how do you, does it, like, wink and just, you know, like, I, yeah, Duh. <sighs> okay, 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 I gotta go. I gotta go. This, this is, 
Wow. Yeah. No. Thank you.